Yo, what's going on guys? A couple things I want to mention at the beginning of this video. This is actually my second take. I didn't like the first one too much after re-watching it, so I want to do it again. Another thing I'm gonna mention is that there will be music cutting out and in due to the fact that Graham Blue does not play music consistently unless you're on the tab. And I'll be using Notepad to jot down my thoughts on the banner. So I want to really throw that out there to people. Thirdly, um, this is a two-part banner. I will be typing that in the uh, notepad. So do know that if you are planning on rolling to finish the spark before the light fest is over, as it will be carrying over to the second part of the light fest. So I want to throw that out there. But with that, let's get started on the video. So first, we're going to be looking at the rate ups. Now, I'm going to be changing up the formula on um, this video and how I do it. So we're going to be first going down here to see what are the actual rate ups and talking about each unit individually and going from there. So for the rate up, we have Sandalfon first. Uh, let's start with number one, rate up characters. <clears throat> so Sandalfon is the first one. Now, Sandalfon is a pretty good unit. Um, he did lose a little bit of value in GW thanks to Kaliostra coming out. Um, though I feel like he's still a more solid unit overall for more content as like you can use them in more areas than Kaliostra. I'll talk more about Kaliostra when we get to her, but I do feel like he has more value in that he has more value outside of Guild Wars. Um, so he can be used in one turn setups and everything like everything of the such. So. He does have a lot of value in that, um, though I don't think he's like a must pick like Summer Grayer was last year. So just do know that. Um, I would say he's kind of worth it for a spark, but not something I would tell people to go actively spark for. Now, Kaliostro is the next unit we'd be looking at and see with a very strong unit in the previous Guild Wars, I would say she was the MVP of last Guild Wars, giving water an insane burst turn with Shiva, very powerful. But with that, she's only really a Guild Wars unit. Unfortunately, the problem is that her skill one has too many drawbacks. One, it does have a long time to start up. Um, because it has a long time to start up, it's not very practical in most content as most content generally lasts one to three turns. And since water is a very bony toe heavy element, most of the time in your water raids, people are running bony toe. And once people drop their bony toe, the boss is generally dead. So unfortunately, she doesn't have the startup time that will make her good in most raids. Secondly, she is a crit dependent character, killing her viability in things like Bahamut high level. So that quest is pretty much out of the question. Thirdly, she does have the ability to be dispelled on her skill one, which kills her viability in something like Ultimate Bahamut. So really, she's just really a great Guild Awards character. And because of that, I feel like she's more of an anniversary ticket unit. So if you're looking for a unit to to ticket in the uh, anniversary T take, yeah. So if you're looking for a unit to ticket, um, next anniversary i feel like she's a really good unit because by the time the anniversary comes out she would have well water should have a gw coming up in their favor so it'll correlate to be a good time the anniversary ticket her for guild wars but outside of guild wars i don't think she's that great personally next we're looking at europa um europa is a very strong unit um having 25 defense down on water is very good She's generally a, a good unit in both normal staff builds and Kango builds. Um, the one problem with her is that her overall damage output is not that high and her skill two is kind of wonky um, as it's kind of hard to set up her skill two properly to get maximum value. Though she's not a bad unit at all and still a very solid unit. Though in water, there's many solid units. The only thing I would mention is that she is a staff unit, making her a little bit more viability than others, that she can be put in a staff comp. So I would say kind of worth it, but she's not like extremely strong. Next, we'll be looking at Jessica. Jessica is, is a healer with too much healing. The problem with Jessica is that her healing is so high, 
but she doesn't really have a lot of damage to the table. She well, she did not bring a lot of damage to the table. And when you have competition with Vera, who is also a very decent healer, but has the stamina buff, that kind of makes it kind of hard for Jessica. Not to mention that all her healing is great and all, but she does not have a dispel. And in the hardest content currently, Fa, you do need the spell, and she's kind of lacking in there. So because of that, she does have a hard time being used properly in the uh, in the uh, optimal Earth build. So, not to mention she is Gun, and Gun does have that weapon proof problem. So there's not a ton of Gun units in Earth that are optimal right now. Maybe with Yugen five star that could change. Just keep in mind that right now she is not that great, um, unfortunately. Next, we have Alexo. So Alexo is a very, very controversial unit. Many people called her almost useless um, upon look, reading her skills. Um, through my time playing with her in Fa and Yubaha, I realized this unit is spectacular. Probably the best unit in those raids right now, solo-wise, as she just offers so much with her skill two and her skill one. Not to mention her skill three isn't bad either when you do hit the accuracy down. So with everything she adds with her kit, she's a very strong unit in harder content, though this is just harder content with generally MVP does not matter. So if you really care about your E-Peen, I feel like she's a very strong E-Peen character, but she's not a very important character to get. Though if you really care about E-Peen, uh, E-Peen tick, uh, E-Peen worth it. So if you care about it, no, of the E-Peen hard content. So, um, if you really care about getting like the high, like the MVP and like Fa and Ultimate Bahamut High Level, she's a very strong unit for doing that. Or if you want to solo it very easily, so you can use her there as well. Very good unit. Now we have Yule. So Yule has a problem here. Um, she came out at a bad time, I believe. Um, she came out in the pre, like post, well pre Grim world. So she didn't really have much time to really become utilized properly. The problem with Yule is that her bonus damage is mainly on her Ogi. When Wind was the I want to auto to turn 10 to set up. And because of that, um, Yule didn't really see much of value there because she, you don't want to Ogi generally to get bonus damage. You just want to mash the turn 10, hit Neo skill 4, Rune Slayer, and do your damage. And when Grimnir came out, Grimnir kind of pushed went to the more staff element with monkey and grimnir both being staff neo being harp does give her viability with the akasha weapon so yule kind of fell back because of that unfortunately though i think she's still decent in the siete build um but it's not nearly close to optimal so i can't really recommend her because she does fall behind quite a bit the next unit we'll be looking at is Hal and mal Hal and Mal are actually stellar, stellar units. They're pretty much good everywhere. Very strong, even early game with their skill one on Magnus. It would allow you to MVP Magnus or at least kill MVP your own Magnus early on a lot easier. So they have that value there. Um, not to mention their skill two is extremely strong. They did get see a kind of buff thanks to Zeus giving now a 3k barrier. So with that 3k barrier, they do have a lot more value now. So I do overall feel they are a strong unit. Um, I would actually say that they are worth it to pull for. Um, they will be very strong during Guild Wars, though unfortunately they do not stack with fairies. I don't know if they'll be optimal or not, as fairy generally is the optimal unit, though fairy is very attack time reliant. So maybe with non-attack time builds, she will be more optimal while during strike time and att or assault time you will see fairy again so a very strong unit i would recommend her as if you're going for any of these units she's definitely the most worth it unit to go as your spark target and finally we have the horny one the one where she cannot stop getting on top of you apparently now i don't have anthra so i can't really give an opinion on this unit neither account rolled her so I'm sorry if people are looking for me to give an opinion on her. I just I don't have any playtime with her, so I could tell you things about her, about her dodge rate being really high and the hype is cool and all. But I, I can't tell you from personal experience of anything about the unit because I just don't have I never played with her, unfortunately. So I don't want to give anyone false info 
about a unit I've never played with. So I'm sorry if you're looking for my my uh, intuition on this unit. I just don't have any because I never played with them. So it's a sad life, but that is the life of a gotcha game. Next, we do have, oh, let's talk about the rate up. Actually, the, I did look at the rates because this is my second time doing the video. So the rates on these units is 0.2, which is the lowest, lowest of any rate up banners. So this is very important to mention. This is the lowest of any rate up banners, not worth rolling outside of sparks. And if you're rolling for like a rate up unit, is you're practically not getting your rate up unit due to how low the rate up is. So I'm sorry to tell people that, that unless you're sparking, you pretty much not, it's not even worth rolling and don't expect to roll your unit that you're sparking for in your spark. Generally, you will not get them, unfortunately, because of the rate being so low. It's the problem when you have a rate up with eight, what, eight characters, you know? Eight characters makes it kind of hard. So unfortunately, that's just how it goes. Next, we'll be looking at the rate up summons. Now, the summons aren't that important, actually. Um, the fire one and the earth one aren't that great. They're okay, but I wouldn't really mention them as anything important. The only one really worth mentioning is Roach Queen. And Roach Queen, it's kind of hard for me to recommend her. With Primal's getting four stars, I, most people don't have enough, enough Sunstones to really invest into stoning a summon to make one element a little bit more optimal. While I do feel like Rose Queen's extremely strong, and for any win main, she's a must stay, and you are losing a ton of value by not having her. But I don't feel she's that important. Uh, Freya does the job well in most content, so you can just generally use Freya and you'll be fine. She's more of people who really care about Guild Wars. If you're going to be like a, a high ranking player in Guild Wars, outside of that, um, I wouldn't get her. So. If you are somebody going to be a high rank, um, high ranker GW. So if you want to be a high ranker in GW, so you kind of something you may want to go for. Um, I wouldn't really spark her though, but something to keep in mind in the back of your head if you want to be a high ranker, high, like really high as in top 100. So uh, those the rate the rate up. So the points, this rate up is actually very low too as... Um, point so just to give people an idea of the, well, the point one six six is actually extremely low from the original point five zero zero for the new summons so do know that the rate up on the summons is actually extremely low now there's something special about this banner I want to mention so we're gonna go to the banner page right now and we're gonna go here so you may have seen it right there, I was just hovering over it, but there's a Star Premium Gotcha. Now this is very, very, very good. Star Premium Gotcha. So this is actually very rare. It includes limited characters or li limited items. Very rare, very rare. It's not too often that we see um, a star premium gotcha because um, during leg fest, could, could they generally include what's in the current gotcha pool. So you do have a chance of rolling things like love internals and any of the leg fest units only like Catalina, you can roll them during the banner. So if you're a person spending money, it's tons of value to get it. Um, tons of value. However, rates are um, abysmal. So, so don't expect anything. So because of the rates being abysmal, I can't, <laughs> you can tell how I type like a YouTuber because I capitalize every letter. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Because the rates are so abysmal, it's kind of hard for me to recommend as, you know, you're going to get something good. 
If you go look at the rates, none, nothing to actually rate up um, during this banner. You would have expected them to put like, the, at least the summer units rate up, but unfortunately they did not rate up anything in this banner. So it kind of sucks if you're like going after one specific item, but I do feel like this banner does have more value than your normal stamina. <laughs> your normal star gotcha. So if you're trying to spend money on a gotcha, this is probably the most value. Um, another thing I'm gonna mention during this is that adds to Cerulean. Uh, in case people did not know, um, it does add to your Cerulean spark count. So it does add to your spark if you do plan on rolling on this banner. So you can count 10 rolls at less if you roll one at uh, star premium. Now, next thing and the last thing, I'm gonna talk about the next banner, next banner. So from what I've noticed in Grand Blue, the next banner should be a new leg fest unit. Um, last year we had Folia, new leg fest, legend fest unit. Um, story unit slash lag fest unit. Fest unit. So, because we have GW um com coming around the corner for fire GW, there's a high chance of them adding a new lag fest unit for fire. If you look at the actual lag fest units in the game right now. For this banner, Fire only currently has one, which is Rackham. Uh, while Water has two, Light has one, Dark has one, but Dark was just added recently as Fairy was added this year. Kind was added last year, giving Earth two. Wind has had two for a while. Water has two, as I mentioned. So currently, Fire's in a good position right now to get their second unit, which is a very high chance of being Reinhardtja, whatever her name, Reinhardtja, I think her name. Um, and if they do, if added, <coughs> if added, <coughs> can come with a full limit break weapon already, like fairy. So, because if they need to full limit break a weapon during the leg, uh, leg fest banner, there's a chance that he can come with a full limit break weapon, just like fairy. Um, I, none of this is like confirmed or anything, but if I had to speculate, this is a high chance of actually happening. Um, so if you're if you're like a fire main and you don't really care about this banner, as it's not much for fire here, you know you can keep the spark um, and you know hope for the best and hope he's really good. Um, he'd probably be a melee unit though, so I don't know how viable he'll be or not. But for people wondering, you know on the next banner um so next banner oh 831 so that's what the next banner should be so if you have any questions on this um if you like the new format i did change a couple of things think taking your taking you guys comments and i did update things so if you like it tell me how you feel about it i know there's no music in the background so do, do tell me how you guys feel about that I am taking all criticisms and I'm trying to adjust my content to make it a little bit better. But thank you guys for watching. Um, if you wanna follow the channel, if you wanna sub, I appreciate it, it helps the channel. If you wanna like and stuff like that, thank you. Um, I'll see you guys next time. And next time being uh, tomorrow, I guess. So.